In this video, you are going to learn a super simple trick that might help you a lot with debugging .NET applications in Visual Studio. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and today I'm going to talk about .NET in Visual Studio and I'm going to show you a super simple trick that works in C Sharp, in VB.NET and probably also in every other .NET based language in Visual Studio and maybe also the same way in other development environments. Let's get to the chase. I prepared a super simple console application here and it's just um, very, very basic. We got a list of customer here. It is called customers and it's initialized to the return value of the get customers function. And then we declare a new variable cust as customer and we simply assign the first value or the first item from our customers list. And then finally I um, issue debugger break. Uh, but this is essentially the same as setting a breakpoint, but due to my work uh, with VBA, I um, where in VBA you lose breakpoints when you close the, the development environment. So um, I tend to write stop in VBA and the equivalent in C Sharp is debugger break. Not sure if that is of any help to you. It's just a habit of mine to have a persistent breakpoint there. Now let's quickly look at the customers class here. And that is fairly simple. We got um, a couple of methods here that that's just a dummy class. It's a custom ID, customer name and some address fields. And I also added quite a few um, other properties here. They are they, they basically don't serve any purpose beyond being there and kind of polluting our view on the class. Um, now there's nothing more to the class, so we don't need to look at that in more detail. Let's quickly peek at the uh, get customers function. That's also very, very simple. Uh, we, we just create a new list of customers and then we add one customer, another customer and yet another one. And at the end, we just return our list here. And that's basically it. It's just a helper method to get a couple of customers. Now, let's run this. Here we are, the debugger is in break mode and you are probably quite used to this view. You got the, the customer uh, variable here, the customer list. Of course, you can expand the variable here and you see all the property values. Here are a lot of dummy properties down here is the customer ID, customer name and some more values there. If I expand our, uh, excuse me, if I expand the list of customers, I see all the elements on and as a value, there's just two string customer. That is basically uh, the default of the two string method. It returns the name of the class um, that is basically the, the, the base of the object that is displayed there. That, that is not really helpful, but we can expand the view here. And then you see um, all the, the values here, as I showed uh, the address values down here, the customer values, uh, the customer ID, customer name. Super simple. If I go to the immediate pane and enter that here, then I get a list of properties very similar to the uh, variable view on the other side. Um, it is very helpful, but it can become really, really cluttered. I often work on components um, like controls 
that are visually displaying data in .NET applications and these inherit from control or a, a, a different type in the .NET WinForms hierarchy and then you have dozens if not hundreds of properties there and if you're interested in some particular properties that are relevant to you it is quite a pain to find them in a very long list because in the immediate pain this output will be eventually truncated after a couple of dozen values. So what I am suggesting today is to give you a little bit more comfort and convenience and we do that by overwriting the toString method. So here we go, public override string to string and to string is essentially um, defined in, uh, in the object uh, class and for simple types like a number or a date it will return the text representation of the date but for custom complex classes it will just return the class name and that is not particularly helpful. So uh, we are not going to return base to string but we are returning string.format and then I say like id colon uh, name and we can add city here so uh, here we go and then we just insert these values uh, they, I typed me because I'm used uh, to Visual Basic forgive me for that so this customer ID customer name and finally this uh, postal code no oh I said I said I want the city. It doesn't really matter, but I uh, should be consistent here. So I uh, just overwrote this method with one line of code. And I run this program again, and then you will see that some things changed for the better. Now, you see here in, uh, in the, the variable inspector window, we don't see any more uh, to stream demo customer, but we see the output of our new to string method in this window here. And you can look at it right away and it will give you much more information that is relevant to you. Which customer is it? What is the ID, the name? And of course you can add any value there that you think is relevant to see when you look at this during debugging. And also in the customers list, you see for each customer, you see the, the ID and name and stuff values right in the list. You do not need to expand the object to get any uh, meaningful information, which object is at which location in the list. And the same also happens here in the immediate pane. You see here is our output of our two string method that is displayed first, but there's also the previous output of all the properties down here. So you don't lose anything, you just gain something. So that's it for today. Um, I would be really interested if this was new to you, if you think it is useful, if you uh, want to try to use that in your own work, please leave a comment uh, below the video. I'm really, really interested in your, in your opinion here. So um, that's finally it. Thank you for watching.
Bye bye.